Good afternoon, everybody. This is Golden Moore Services. This is I am Hotel Jed Mutalib Atum L. And uh, I just want to touch up on something real quick, man. Uh, well, actually, it's probably not going to be real quick, but I want to talk about disinformation on the internet. Um, I'm writing something for somebody, an affidavit in their in their situation. Um, and I'm looking up a lot of um, case law pertaining to challenging jurisdiction and I'm finding a lot of this shit like right here once jurisdiction is challenged the court cannot proceed I'm gonna take you to the Justia website where I, where I can look up all the fucking um, uh, the the consenting decisions and the dissenting decisions of judges and you do not see this and this is supposed to be quote right this is supposed to be a quote from a judge in this case and when I look forward early in a lot of these cases I'm reading I don't see this shit so uh, what is this 505 federal second reporter page 1026 so let's look at this real quick Let's look at this. So, uh, let's go to U.S. Law and U.S. Court of Appeals, second series, and I think it was, five, you, you can look at all the volumes here, and da, 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 this is 505, and then quickly search for 1026, and here we go, right? So 505-1026, let's see, 505, it says Mellow versus the United States, right? Mellow, United States, so that's the right one. Now, now when I look at this, I just simply take some words out of here, I'll go, let's look at the word, let's look at challenge. Let's, as a matter of fact, let's look at this whole clause there you know what I'm saying we'll just look it up it should be there if he said it it should be there right so I'm looking it ain't there you know what I'm saying <laughs> that whole clause I mean I'm looking at the case this is this is the publication of the case everything the judge says in their um, in their um, in their opinions right where there's uh, consenting or dissenting and it ain't there. I mean, none of these words are in the in the fucking opinions at all. Let's look up just jurisdiction. Oh shit! Put way too much in there. Jurisdiction. All right. So there's eleven instances of the word jurisdiction. But we're looking for this exact quote. Once jurisdiction is challenged, the court cannot proceed. Mel over is U.S. Oh, shit. I bet. Okay. So, jurisdiction, defendant. Okay, that's not it. Because this is defendant's motion as amended to dismiss, urged that the court lack jurisdiction by, reasons fa re by reason of plaintiff's failure to exhaust administrative remedies as required by 28 U.S.C. 26. 2675A. So that ain't it. Alright, we can already tell this ain't it. The court held the plaintiff's claim failed to comply with the regulation and hence that the claim did not meet jurisdictional requirement. And uh, I forgot what this case was about. Uh, but some, this has something to do with, um, um, a f and these all have to do with federal courts. This ain't like state courts or superior courts, all federal court. So, uh, and if you want to move it from state to federal, you have to answer the federal question, which I'm not going to go into in this video, but, but as you can see, I'm looking at, there is nothing in here that says that shit. When it clearly appears that the court lacks jurisdiction, the court has no authority to reach the merits. In such a situation, the action should be dismissed per want of jurisdiction. The, the court wants to have jurisdiction, 
but you're not giving it a reason. And I think in this instance, but you can see every instance of the word jurisdiction in the case, and the judgment of dismissal is amended to show that it is based on want of jurisdiction, as so amended the judgment is affirmed. So they're affirming, um, they're affirming the decision made by the lower court. So it looks, so these, that's all in, 11 instances and nowhere in that opinion does it say this. So there, somebody's purposely putting misinformation on the internet. Um, let's look at another, let's look at Joyce. You know, those are pretty hard to find, 2D. Um, let's look at this one, because I did look at this one earlier. Kurt, so it says, Court must prove on the record all jurisdiction facts related to the jurisdiction asserted. So let me go here. Oh, actually, let me look at this. 102 Federal Second Reporter 188. Um, so... Go back, go back, go back, go back, and I think it was 108. Let's see, 108, page 188. So, let's look up 188, and, okay, didn't look up 188 at all, but, ah, uh, shit, they don't have 188 here, so let's, um, so it's 102, or, or 10, here it is, I must have looked it up earlier, oh, they do have it, I don't know why it didn't pop up, oh, that's 128, 88, that's not it, 108, okay, they don't have that one, I thought I found it earlier, but they don't have it, the law provides that once state and federal jurisdiction have been challenged, it must be proven. Um, I couldn't find this one earlier either, but maybe I have some luck this time. But what I'm saying, a lot of this stuff uh, is unproven. Did I really copy over there? Or did I just copy? Okay. Jurisdiction can be challenged at any time. Okay, let's look at this one. Just to double check it and make sure it's real. So 495, 906. Mm. 906, let's see if we can find it. All right, here we go. Something we can verify. So, the law provides. Let me just type it in because it's, it's doing a funny copy paste. It'll say the law provides. And if it's on here, Google will be able to find it on the page. But again, there's nothing in here where the judge is quoted verbatim saying the law provides. So again, let's look up jurisdiction. Alright, so. Defendant Power Company filed a notice of appeal on February 23rd, 1972 and a separate motion to remand the case to the district court with direction to vacate judgment for lack of jurisdiction. The contention being that plaintiffs and defendants were all citizens of Utah. Oh yeah, this is the diversity of citizenship. So yeah, if you're gonna, I forgot what statute they're trying to stand on this one, but um, you got this is another federal question. Uh, you either you, you can file under deprivation of rights, um, you know, uh, the county or the city trying to conspire against your rights, you could bring that into federal court. Uh, another standing that you can have to bring into federal court is um, an interstate commerce charge where um, if you're doing business across state lines and you damage somebody or you commit fraud, then that can also be brought into a federal court. Uh, but it has to cross state lines. You have to be doing business across state lines. Or if you commit a crime, 
across state lines. Of course, the feds got jurisdiction. Uh, so anyway, let's read this. The remand remanded the cause to the district court for the sole purpose of hearing or determining the federal jurisdiction issue. So this is like a discovery. Um, the, this court retained jurisdiction of the matter following completion of the district court hearing. Um, this required the parties to show why the case at bar should not be similar, summarily, summarily reversed with direction to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction. So it's being the court is taking the position right here that whatever's going on here, they want to hear, they want you to file some affidavits of proof that that this case should go back down to the district court and then the district court is supposed to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction for diversity of citizenship. Um, so let's read more. The soul, you can tell this, you can just tell it's not in here. It's not in here, y'all. Uh, so we're looking for this exact phrase. We're looking for this sentence right here. The law, pro it ain't in here. I'm telling you. The law provides. It, it's not here, dude. <laughs> So a lot of motherfuckers is using this shit in their paperwork, and I was double checking some paperwork I received from someone else. I'm not gonna say their name, but they're quoting a lot of this, a lot of this shit, a lot of this stuff. You can find this anywhere on the internet. They even got a Facebook page on this. But it's misinformation. I, I bet you the feds is behind it. I bet you the goddamn feds is behind it, or somebody from the bar that you made. But it, but you got to understand the process for the federal question, and and actually uh, answering the question that will give juri that will give the federal courts jurisdiction. The Supreme Court reason of jurisdiction. Federal courts is limited. Judi yeah. Objection cannot waive jurisdictional requirements. So I'm going through this whole thing because I don't. You know, if he's right, the guy is right. If the people who quoted these case citations in the quotes. Okay, it's nowhere in here. So, you know, that that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of disinformation on the internet. So, uh, people need to read their fucking paperwork. And they need to double check it. I don't give a fuck who it came from. Double check the fucking paperwork, man. You can come to this website. I kind of showed you how to navigate just T. I even got an account here now. But if you want to look up a Supreme Court case under federal law, there it is. If you know how to quote um, case, uh, case citation, you can look here. Let's say it's 574, page 100 or something. Uh, docket. Oh, they have, oh, this is not my docket numbers. That's a bad example then. Okay. Um. They're going by docket numbers. Hold on. Okay, here's the page number: 300 USC, U.S. Supreme Court Recorder, and then page one. So this is Taver versus Indian Territory. So that's how you look up stuff. You know what I mean? You come here. The, if you see um, uh, like U.S. Let, let's go over here. Like U.S. Like 495 Federal Reporter. Second edition in pages 906 and 910. Um, you know, you would just come here and hopefully they have it in here, you know. Um, let's see, Federal Reporter, second series. Uh, volume 495. And then, um, <coughs> I think I found it by search last time, so. Uh, let's go down to 906. Can be kind of tedious, but hey, here you go, right here. And it brings up the whole case. So you definitely want to learn how to read case law. Uh, if you don't, don't go by a word and you don't know what it means, man. You could, you could fucking let's see a word that's not commonly used in our language, our common language. Da, 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 da. You definitely want to know what a statute is. Rendered, but what does rendered mean? I'm Hotep. What is 
What does render mean, man? Here it is right here. To provide or give a service help cause to be or become. Alright, so it's either a service or you're bringing it into existence right there. The rains rendered his escape impossible. So the rains pretty much caused to be, caused his escape to be impossible. Simple as that. Um, if you can't comprehend that, you may have to go to community college or something. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just keeping it real, man. Um, because you need to be able to uh, interpret this shit, you know? So get you a black law uh, dictionary or something. Um, I actually wanted to go over a case. I think I freaking... Ah, man. You know what? I wanted to go over a case and now I lost my... It is actually... Yeah, the Supreme Court. I mean, the Superior Court. This, see, all these statutes here, I mean, all these cases, these are with federal court. You don't want to, you don't want to look up federal court because you're not in federal court yet. So actually, this was a good one. Uh, this is Goodwine versus Superior Court, and this is in L.A. County, where I guess there was a couple. The plaintiff, Marjorie E. Goodwin, began an action for separate maintenance against her husband, Don F. Goodwine, a writ of attachment, this is an attachment lien, which is basically a lien on property, was levied upon defendant's real property in the county of Los Angeles, given the trial court quasi in rim jurisdiction. Now I'm going to give my opinion on that in a minute. And here's some, and here's some uh, case laws in California that, that, uh, that they're basing their um, jurisdiction off of. Plaintiff secured an order for service by publication based on an affidavit that defendant resided out of the state and defendant was personally served in Mexico. Defendant moved to quash the writ of attachment, the service of summons and complaint, and to dismiss the action on the ground that the trial court was without jurisdiction. So he thinks because he's in Mexico, that they don't have jurisdiction over his property, but he's going to find out he's wrong. The trial court granted defendant's motion and dismissed the action. Uh, so they probably, I don't know if they should have done this, because they did have jurisdiction. So let's read on. Staying, staying its order pending, staying its order pending appellant review. Oh, okay, so they did grant the defendant's motion but it's on pause. A stay is to prevent something from happening in the court. So they're staying its order of pending appellate review because the plaintiff, the, she, she uh, uh, appealed right away once the, once the uh, trial court granted the motion to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction. So plaintiff then filed a, the writ that filed this petition for a writ of mandate to compel the trial court to vacate its order dismissing the action. So she petitioned, uh, well, she filed an appeal, uh, and then she filed the, this petition with the Court of Appeal for a writ of mandate to compel the trial court to vacate its order dismissing the action. Now, you cannot write a writ of mandate. This has to come from the court. So that's why she's petitioning the court for a writ of mandate to compel the trial court to vacate its order because the writ of mandate has to come from a judicial court to a legislative court. The superior courts are legislative courts, not judicial courts. So she's asking, a petition basically means to beg or ask for a writ of mandate you know what I'm saying? To vacate that order and dismiss an action. So anyway, this goes, uh, tells a little bit of the story about the background of, of, the, of the Goodwins. How they got married in Nevada in 55, moved to California, and then moved to Mexico, or Mexico. Defendant contends that the trial court has no jurisdiction in action for separate maintenance when neither party is domiciled in the state. There is no merit in this contention. In an action for divorce, domicile is dispositive. 
since the domicile of one's of one spouse within the state gives power to that state to dissolve a marriage wheresoever contracted. So, I mean, this gets kind of tricky because they got married in Nevada, but they moved to California and then they moved to Mexico. But um, this is for um, a lien on the home uh, by the wife. So the state in which one spouse is domiciled is deemed to have sufficient interest to terminate the marriage. So this is a, um, a statement, a, a declaration statement. So the state in which one spouse is domiciled is deemed to have sufficient interest to terminate the marriage. So even though they're married in Nevada, California has an interest to terminate the marriage because they're going to make money off of it. That's why. Because divorce and marriage is a, is a multi-billion dollar industry. So anyway, thus a state has the power to grant an ex parte divorce. Ex parte means the other party ain't even got to be there. Ex the other party. Divorce to a doma, uh, domiciliary wife without personal jurisdiction over the husband. So they're saying that they don't have any per personal jurisdiction because he's out of the country and out of the state uh, over the husband or quasi in rim jurisdiction over his property in an action. Okay, so I'm not going to read the rest of this. Y'all can find that. But jurisdiction is granted. So they actually, the court made a procedural error and... Um, in deciding whether they had jurisdiction or not since the property is in LA County they do have jurisdiction so they they erred and so when she um, what, what, what's her name uh, Marjorie when she filed an appeal she was actually granted the appeal and um, I think the case was the friends has prayed. A determination that a plaintiff is domiciled here would ordinarily preclude granting. Preclude means to pre prevent. Basically, granting the defendant's motion for dismissal on the ground of forum non-convenience. The doctrine of forum non-convenience. Hmm. What the hell is this? I'm, I never heard of this before. Let's look that shit up. Form non-convenience. Hmm. A court's discretionary power to decline the exercise of its jurisdiction, where another court may, where another court may more conveniently hear the case. Ah. So that's what the appellant court did. And they're also saying that the defendant's motion for dismissal um, is not going to work. They're basically saying it's not going to work because the wife, the plaintiff, is still domiciled in the county where she filed the initial uh, case, the initial litigation. So, huh, so this form of non-convenience, the courts can take this on sui sponte if they think another court has more jurisdiction what kind of ties back to uh, the error by the superior court saying that they don't have jurisdiction and granting the dis and granting the defendant the uh, the motion to dismiss for lack of jurisdiction so actually they did have jurisdiction they didn't even know they had it so the appellant court sent it back down to the supreme court um, to try the case so Okay, that's pretty interesting. So you learn something new every time you look at this shit. But the focus of this video is definitely on um, misinformation on the net, man. There's a lot of misinformation on the net, so do your own research, man. I don't give a fuck who gives you the goddamn paperwork. Do your own research. Alright? Alright, man. Peace to the gods. Everybody be safe. And until uh, next time.